Hello, welcome back to another mini common art uh, video. And uh, this time it's going to be quite interesting and shocking. Well, I, I think that uh, usually they are interesting because not only do you have an opportunity to practice your English, but also uh, the opportunity to learn something new. Um, based on a piece of art, whether it's music or a painting or, um, I don't know, a sculpture, a photograph, many things that make us reflect, make us think and make us learn. And of course, practice English because you are listening to the language um, with me and uh, it gives you an opportunity also to improve your vocabulary, to improve your listening skills, etc. So what's the topic today? Today's topic is how does silence sound? Hmm. Have you ever heard of silence? Have you ever heard silence? How does it sound? So what's the intention for today's session? Today, we're going to be reflecting about the relevance of having moments of quietness and silence in our lives. What activities are we going to do? We're going to do a, a brain gym exercise called Peter Pan. Uh, you know, this character that had um, pointed ears. Uh, then we're going to listen to silence and talk a little bit about a piece of music called 433 that John Cage um, created in 1952. Um, then we are going to be exploring four reasons to promote silence. Mm, do an exercise about the paradox of silence and also reflect on a quote by the composer. Are we ready to start? So let's start with this uh, Peter Pan exercise, okay? And for that, I would like you to sit straight. Very important that your back is straight, relax your shoulders. It is a breathing exercise, but what we're going to do is to pull our ears, just like Peter Pan that he had his pointed ears. We're going to pull them up and forward, all right? So first we breathe in, Hold breath, pull ears up and out. As long as you can. And then release ears. And breathe out. We do this three times. Are we ready? Let's go. Next one. Last one. What we are doing over here is opening the uh, listening channels so that the sounds come more directly to the brain. And of course, since we are doing um, this exercise with both ears, um, we are connecting both hemispheres. Okay, it's a very quick exercise you can do at any moment. It's breathing, it's connecting with yourself. And it's also improving your um, ability to listen or to hear different sounds. Let's move on. Now, I'm going to play a trick with you. I hope you're ready for this. Because um, we're going to listen to silence. So, yes, 
The subject was, how does silence sound? I'm going to put my screen in black, totally in black, for four minutes and 33 seconds. For that, I am going to use my cell phone and I am going to set my chronometer to four minutes and 33 seconds. Now, I don't want you, well, I would not like you to um, turn off the camera or stop the video or go do something else. Try to be here for four minutes and 33 seconds, breathing in, breathing out, and paying attention to whatever sound, to whatever thing happens around you. Are we ready? So I'll put my screen black and we start the chronometer, four minutes and 33 seconds. Please bear with me. This will be a very interesting exercise for you. And then we talk about it. Let's go.
Welcome back. How did you feel about this four minutes and 33 seconds of silence on the screen? Did you think it was a joke I was playing on you? Some people think it's a joke. What's happening? So what kind of a class is this? Um, I want to share some comments from my learners, those who attend the real common art session, how they felt when I did this to them. Um, some of them said that it was interesting um, paying attention to the sounds around them, um, around the place, um, the sounds around the house, uh, our, uh, the sounds outside their house, and the birds, the uh, the cars, the traffic, whatever sound there was. Um, some of them felt very anxious. Yes, silence can provoke anxiety because sometimes we are very used to having noise all the time, um, some sort of noise, whether it's music or the TV on or people talking. Um, and when there is absolute silence, we start to feel anxious, like you need something, something is missing. Um, some people got memories. Uh, for example, one of the girls commented that it reminded her of her father, that whenever he was reading, when he stopped reading, he closed the book and he remained silent for a moment to reflect on whatever he had learned. Um, some of them smiled. I could see their faces, that they were smiling, that they were um, moving around, feeling anxious. Um, and also other people commented that they made them reflect upon noise pollution. We are so very used of having noise all the time. So whenever we just sit down, close our eyes maybe, or um, and do nothing and stay in absolute silence, our brain starts getting lots of thoughts uh, and it's also, let's say, noise pollution, all right? Because your brain is thinking, oh, I have to do this, oh, I have to do that. I cannot be here any longer. I want to move on and do something else. Uh, when you are in silence, also your perception can change through time and with education. It needs practice, okay? At the beginning, maybe one minute is too much. Sometimes when we are in a conversation with somebody or when we are in a meeting, we feel like two seconds or five seconds of silence is stressful. You don't know what to do about it. You want somebody else to say something or you want to jump out and say something. Um, being quiet, being in absolute silence needs practice. That's why for many people it's very difficult to um, do these um, meditative practices. Okay, so um, how was it for you? How did you feel? Was it stressful? Was it relaxing? Did you feel okay with the silence? Did were you able to stay here and look at a blank or well or a dark screen for four minutes and 33 seconds just paying attention to the sounds around you if you want to let me know i would i will i would be very glad to hear about your experience now this was this is not a joke uh, this is actually based, or this activity was actually based on a composition made by um, a musician called John Cage. He has other pieces, of course, but this was an experiment that he did in 1952, and he claims that it took him five years to compose this piece. Wow, yeah, you know, this crazy... Um, artists because he was trying to discover or to really 
get the purpose of this composition. It was not only like, oh, let's do what happens if uh, nobody plays anything and let's see what happens. He wanted to discover what the purpose was in doing this. So um, what he claims, what John Cage claims, uh, is that silence, true silence, doesn't really exist. Maybe it does. If we go uh, out on a spaceship uh, out in the universe and there is no sound, absolutely. But as I mentioned before, there are always sounds coming from the outside and there are also um, there's also noise coming from your brain. Um, so what he also mentions is that silence is the absence of intention. When you go into a quiet moment, into a silent moment, you go in there without any intention. You just want to connect with yourself, connect with your senses, especially the hearing, and you are not expecting anything. You are just attentive to see what noises come up. Mm, there are many noises coming, but you're just attentive to see what is going on. You are not expecting anything. There is no intention. Now, um, when this piece is performed or was performed or uh, in a concert hall, um, firstly, uh, it was only played by a pianist. So the pianist was very serious, as you can see in the image. He sat down, he opened the piano, and he um, prepared himself to play the piano. And then suddenly, there was nothing, no sound. Do you think that really there was no sound? Imagine if you were in one of these concerts that you are expecting to hear some music and there's no music coming out of that instrument or those instruments. So the people start feeling nervous, start making movements. Maybe they <laughs> cough, you know, or... Um, Somebody starts whispering to the person next to them. And so um, John Cage, what he mentions is that the piece is performed by the audience and the environment. Every time this piece is played, the reactions are different. And nowadays, it has not only been executed by the solo pianists. It, it it has also been played by jazz musicians and rock musicians. They go onto stage, they pretend they're going to play, and they play nothing. So the people start getting, as I mentioned, anxious. What's going on? Oh, maybe they forgot to turn on the the the, the high speakers or something is happening, something's wrong over here. But the musicians are just staying um, without any movement and also paying attention to what um, whatever is happening, happening um, with the audience, okay? So no two performances of this piece are the same. The listener becomes involved. Uh, the listener becomes a part of the piece. It is the listener who is taking action in order to create the music. So it becomes an amalgamation of sounds, different sounds from different people, from the ambience, from whatever is happening around us. And um, so John Cage, what he did when he created this piece was that he denied his own expression 
in a composition to empower you, the listener, to create the music so that you could get really involved in creating the piece. Quite weird, right? But these are the facts. And this piece is very famous. From the beginning, it became very famous because of um, these reactions. And if you look it up uh, on YouTube, you will find many different um, versions of this piece from a solo player to a band. So silence. What is the importance of silence and why should we promote it? Let's take a look at four reasons to promote silence. The first one that I want to share with you is that the quieter you are, the more you hear. We train our ears to listen when we are quiet. Um, Pythagoras said, a fool is known by speech and a wise man by silence. How many times we find people just speaking because they have the need to speak, but mm, they are talking nonsense. And usually the people who are wiser, who know better, they are quiet. They are listening to whatever the others are saying. And then, if necessary, they will say something important. Second reason to promote silence. Silence boosts creativity. When we can remain in silence, we start listening to our own thoughts. So these thoughts can boost or um, promote creativity. Albert Einstein mentioned the monotony and solitude of a quiet life stimulate the creative mind. So perhaps you should try it. Be quiet for a moment. Don't speak. Just let your thoughts run inside your brain and maybe you will have one of these aha moments when you say, aha, I got it. Aha, I have the idea. Aha, I have understood what I needed to understand. Mm -hmm. Third reason, silence can send a powerful message. Perhaps you have heard of uh, some riots. Um, well, some of them can be very noisy, people shouting whatever they are complaining about, but other riots are silent riots. Nobody speaks, maybe they just have a candle, maybe the only thing that you can hear is their steps moving forward, but they are not saying anything. And silence can send a powerful message. Perhaps you have also been in the experience um, when, um, I don't know, you ask something or you comment on something and um, the other person remains quiet. So this is a powerful message that they are sending. Mark Twain said, the right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a rightly timed pause. So it's very important. Uh, one of the um, ways to improve our listening skills, to listen attentively, which is one of the power skills very necessary nowadays, is the ability to listen, 
to listen to somebody attentively is really be there in the moment, listening to the person, whatever he or she wants to say, and just keep silent for one or two seconds. Let the person finish speaking. When you are sure that they have finished speaking, maybe you can comment or ask a question or paraphrase or do something. And this will mean that you are really listening and that you are really paying attention to whatever they are saying. When you just jump out or interrupt a conversation, it means that you are already, that you are thinking on the right answer at the same time as the person is speaking. So you are not truly listening attentively. And number four, Silence improves well-being. So that's why um, these uh, meditative practices or mindful practices um, are very important because, yes, silence improves our health, our well-being. Try and um, give yourself three minutes, four minutes, five minutes of silence every day if you can do it longer, fantastic. George Michelson Foy says, release comes from emptiness. The emptiness of silence, of lonely landscapes, of closed eyes, of lying down in a dark, quiet room. Okay, so when you keep silence, you feel relieved because you are letting out this emptiness of silence, this loneliness of landscapes, this uh, eyes closed, these, uh, uh, the, uh, the powerful effect of lying down in a dark, quiet room is so powerful that you can release your stress, your anxiety. So try it out. At the beginning, it's difficult, but then it becomes easier and easier. If I may, I would like to share an experience with you, an experience that I lived um, maybe around 20 years ago. Um, I was suffering from some stress and I went uh, to a consultation with a uh, um, uh, life coach and uh, she asked me, um, if I ever during my day stopped working or stopped doing uh, something, if I was able to sit down and do nothing. And I said, no, absolutely, I can't. I have to do to be, I have to be doing something all the time. Like whether I am uh, preparing my classes or if I'm watching TV, I also need to be doing something manual like knitting or like sewing the buttons or whatever I um, piece of cloth that I need to fix. I have to be doing something. How can you imagine I can sit on a sofa, on a couch, just like that? And she said, do it. 15 minutes a day. I replied, this is impossible, impossible for me. She said, okay, start with five minutes. Can I listen to music? I asked. She said, no. No music, no doing anything. Just sit on a couch or lay down on your bed and be absolutely quiet with no movement at all not doing anything and in absolute silence the first times i tried it uh, i felt so horrible so nervous so anguished so um, anxious because i had so many things to do and five minutes were five minutes my god please but then i understood the importance of being quiet of being in silent in silence because it really helped me notice 
that these five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes were an essential part of my everyday. It boosted my creativity, definitely. It made me think or reflect of other things and it made me listen to other sounds, be in the here and the now. That is very important nowadays. How many times have we heard of mindfulness and all of these things connect with the here and now. So connecting with the here and now is also connecting with silence. Now, let's do an exercise on the paradox of silence. And for this, I'm going to share screen with you so that we can do it together. So here we are, the paradox of silence. A paradox, well, it's like um, two opposing ideas, but they complement each other. So we're going to decide which of the words that we have on the box fit in on the blank spaces. It's an opposing idea, but it will complement the sentence. First one, silence is minimalistic, yet, which do you think it is? Imposing. Yes, minimalistic, very little, but so powerful, so big, okay? Next one, it's empty. What would be an opposite word for empty? Yeah, you got it right. It's empty, but at the same time, it's full. Next one. We can't verbalize silence, meaning we can't explain what silence is. We can't verbalize silence. But everyone understands. If I asked you what is silence, you would have trouble explaining it but everyone understands what silence is. Next one, it's mysterious, but at the same time, it's clear. Let's move for the next one. It's soothing, comforting, and yet at the same time, it is painful, what we mentioned, okay? Sometimes being quiet, sometimes, well, um, many people cannot sleep if there's noise around them uh, and other people need to have some sort of noise. And these two seconds, three seconds, five seconds of silence in a conversation can be very painful. Next, sometimes it's idle. Idle means... Mm, it's not necessary, okay? What would be an opposite of that? Something that the opposite of is not necessary would be is necessary or it's useful. Sometimes it's useful to have these minutes of silence. Next one. It's consenting, consenting, um, like saying yes, all right? When you give your consentment, it's because you say yes to something. It's consenting, silence is consenting, but at the same time, it is rebellious. Because your mind continues or wants to continue speaking. Your mind wants to continue having noises. Your mind wants to continue hearing something. Next one. It may be elusive, 
but at the same time, it is accessible. Whenever you want, you can have silence. All right, let's move on for the last part. What I'm going to do in this next part is to share a quote by the composer John Cage. He was born in 1912, died in 1992, an American composer. Uh, um, and he says, silence is the absence of intention, as I mentioned before. In silence, hearing becomes your own action. So the music belongs to you. This was the main objective of him composing this piece called 433, four minutes and 33 seconds. That was the experience that you have just lived with this four minutes and 33 seconds of emptiness. I hope you did it. And I hope you really um, allowed yourself to feel silence, to connect with the exter ex external world, whether dogs were barking or cars were passing by or birds, and also to connect with yourself, your heartbeat, mm, noises in your stomach, whatever happened. So I hope you have enjoyed this mini common art session. And I'm very glad to see that more and more people are watching these sessions. I think that they bring something to you. From art, they bring a reflective point uh, because art makes us reflect, makes us think. Everybody has their own op opinion about art. And it's very interesting when... Um, you can have discussions or you can learn from art and you can get your own reflections about art uh, in any of their manifestations. There are many other mini common art sessions. If you haven't seen them, uh, look for them in my YouTube channel or right under the list of mini common art sessions. I'm sure that if you dedicate 30 minutes a week, 40 minutes, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. But if you dedicate this 30 or 40 minutes to watch these videos, to pay attention to these videos, I'm sure that you will improve your English. You know where to find me if you want to follow me on my Instagram and Facebook, A Learning MX. And next week, I'll bring you some other topic. We don't know what it will be, but be attentive. Subscribe to my list so that you get notifications whenever I upload videos. I'm also uploading videos in Spanish, um, visualizations, so that you, um, well, in order to help you to get rid of your um, anxiety or stressful um, states. Okay? Thanks. And see you soon. Bye.